Thank you very much. Let's see if this works. So the title of my presentation today is uh, Enabling the Hydrogen Economy Through Disruptive Industrial Hydrogen Solutions. And the reason for that is that I want to take the, the chance to explain a little bit more about what we are really doing at, at Metacon. Uh, it's been a journey of, you could say, uh, both building and transforming the company over a few years now, in the middle of some uh, turbulent um, conditions out there, as you know. Uh, but I want to show you today that we have a very, very clear focus and very clear strategy and are very much on the way of creating I think one of the most unique and high potential companies in the green hydrogen sector. Um, we're, we're quite small, we're listed on uh, First North. Uh, most of you probably know that and some of you have followed us during the years. You know that we come from technology innovation. Um, but we have done some interesting things and I want to show you how we want to disrupt this market, how we want to be a player that can grow from a, a, a small uh, skilled but not very known uh, actor very quickly into one of the most uh, interesting, I think, and, and um, capable suppliers in this space. So, uh, many of you know us. We have a portfolio of solutions. Um, on the left here, you can see that we have uh, reformers and we have electrolyzers that were built over, over the latest years and reformers since quite long. These are two key technologies for producing green hydrogen. And um, linked to that, we have also a number of, you could say, application products. One is in, in the CHP area, combined heat and power. You can produce electricity and heat based on gas. And you also have refueling stations for the transport sector. So uh, at the high level, we have a very complete portfolio for green hydrogen. We can produce green hydrogen for anybody who needs it, transport sector, base industry, from different sources. And we also are linking into the use of green hydrogen in different sectors, for example, real estate and uh, yeah, refueling of, of various vehicles. As a company, we are... We have started our internationalization journey. We are present in different places uh, already. And um, we, we try and develop the market in a, in a sort of sensible way, uh, since we are not that big. But we want to be present in our key markets. Uh, so what are we really doing in terms of what we want to change here? Well, over 95% of hydrogen today is produced from natural gas, fossil natural gas, in huge plants close to gas sources. We want to take this and convert a completely new set of solutions for the market that now wants to have the same green hydrogen, but fossil free, or the same hydrogen, I should say, but fossil free. So that's why we package a reforming system similar to this huge plant, but the technology that can be placed on site close to, for example, a biogas plant. Or if you have green electricity, as we do have in Sweden, you can use electrolyzers. So shifting away from fossil gray hydrogen to unique solutions tailor-made for creating green hydrogen locally instead. Uh, like I said, we, we are now moving out from Sweden and Greece, that's been our core places uh, historically. Of course, as a listed company in Sweden and main operations in R&D in Greece. Uh, but we are also uh, looking at expansion in different directions now, because you know that Scandinavia is an electricity country. We are not used to gas. So the main part of our future markets are, of course, outside of, of Scandinavia. Uh, but having said that, it's also a very big and interesting market, especially for electrolyzers in Sweden. This is just an overview of why we think this is interesting. These are huge industrial projects for green hydrogen, just a, a fraction of them uh, available today. And why do, why do we know this? Well, 
We know this because we are talking as a company, as a potential to supplier to many, many of these projects today. And they are extremely big and they are growing very fast. Uh, one, you could say, uh, one way of, of uh, thinking about the uh, opportunity here is to look at rough cost and prices and, and what, what money are we talking about here. You see, you have gigawatt scale here. Gigawatt is 1,000 megawatts, right? One megawatt is in the cost range of 50 million sec. So you can see the order of magnitude of these, of these projects. It's, it's billions and billions and billions, and these are ongoing. So, uh, and for, for us, we want to be part of this industrial sector. And this is the strategy we are migrating into right now. And that is why we also announced a very interesting project for us, uh, based on a license agreement with our Chinese partner. We're going to build a gigafactory, as it's so popularly called these days, for producing electrolyzers. And we teamed up with, with Peric, our Chinese partner, almost four years ago now. So this is based on a long-term relationship with, with Peric. And, and Peric is a world-leading pr producer of electrolyzers since many, many years. They never did something like that in their 60-year-old history. So it's a unique thing we, we have done here. And it's also driven, of course, by the geopolitical fear of China, you could say, the situation where, where we want to pr protect Europe from what happened in solar, for example. But this is, um, this is something we, we want to innovate around. And for this reason, we, we create a license agreement. So we are not going to source our systems as a distributor anymore. We're going to manufacture them here under license. Uh, no Chinese ownership. Um, so it's going to be a, a European, hopefully Swedish, uh, big project, but based on very, very proven technology. So uh, there are two stages in the contract. One is half a gigawatt, and the and second one is uh, one gigawatt or 1,000 megawatts. Um, and we're, we're starting this project now. And you could say, what, what are we really doing here? Well, I think we, it is a way of showing innovation in the business development dimension, because we are also at the same time licensing our technology to Peric for production and sales in China. So we give them our technology for China, and they give us their technology for Europe. Uh, so it's, it's a, some kind of a technology exchange here where, where we get access to electrolyzers uh, and they get access to our reforming technology. The disruptiveness of this will be price, reliability and availability of these systems locally here in, in Sweden and in Europe. Um, we are already very good at, at designing these huge plants. Uh, we, are do, we are doing that, of course, in the collaboration we already have with Peric since long. But you see here, it, down in the left there, if you can see, there are some unique parameters that we, we get in this deal. Peric has more than 50 5 megawatt stacks in operation since 10 years. This is absolutely unique. So we get access to a technology that is large scale and proven in the industrial sector uh, more than, I think, any supplier on the market. And very, very good quality data, very slow degradation, and we have many, many industrial projects interesting in this. Over to the right, you also see a 10 megawatt version that they just completed and launched. And um, this is the biggest stack size on the market. So when you talk about 500 megawatt plants, it of course becomes very interesting to be able to build that on bigger modules. Otherwise, you get very high complexity in these plants. So we have some unique things in the technology. And um, that's why the, 
the, the electrolyzer gigafactor project for us that we, we are starting now is uh, the most interesting thing we ever did in, in Metacon, of course. But I also want to mention a little bit about the reforming technology, as I call the clever route to green hydrogen. This is doing the same thing, producing the same green hydrogen, but without electric, uh, green electricity. So we are using um, other sources like biogas, could be bioethanol, uh, in a little compact refinery, a little compact factory, with a reactor system and a purification system. So it's modular, uh, we can produce up to 300 cubic meters per hour, per unit, uh, off-grid. This can be run sort of in island mode, and we can use different sources of, of biogas to feed this system. And it has high, very high potential to be a profitable, profitable uh, deal for both us, of course, and for the customer. Uh, and to give you some idea about the capacity here, it's about 600 kilos per day in continuous operation. The beauty of this is that it's not dependent on when the sun shines or when the wind blows. In a biogas plant, you have continuous operation feeding this around the clock. And 600 kilos, you can think of the capacity of that as a, a full refueling of, for example, a Toyota Mirai a car, where you drive maybe 700 kilometers on a full refueling, is about 5.5 kilograms. So it's, it's in, in excess of 100 refuelings, full refuelings per day in capacity of, of this type of system. Of course, um, Germany is the key market for this. Germany has more than 10,000 biogas plants existing with, um, with a lot of challenges. But if, if you look to the right, if you see Sweden, it's also very high potential here. We have around 220 biogas plants distributed in many good areas. And you can easily see the connection here where one of these reformers could be placed close to a biogas plant and you could have hydrogen refueling along the way. Locally produced, I call it our, our, cru our green crude oil, right? We can produce this ourselves. So uh, we have one project this year which will be very important for us. It is uh, an opening and an inauguration of demonstrating this in Germany on site on a big wastewater treatment plant in southern Germany. And uh, this is not the, the highest scale, but it's a high scale uh, product. You can see 110 kilos roughly uh, per day in production of, of hydrogen. So we're going we're gonna to be able to show this to the market at the right place later this year. In summary, you can see over to the right, what we're doing in Metacon is we are building a solution that is green, disruptive, and I think very unique in this market. We are flying under the radar a little bit yet as a company, but I think very soon we will be out there with extremely competitive and prof profitable offers. Uh, so reformers, electrolyzers, and we are building the company to, to support this, to meet this uh, market entry that we are, we are doing right now. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. I'll take questions. Well, uh, thank you so much, Kister. Um, let me start here by uh, reflecting on, on the presentation here, um, because um, you're talking about a lot of countries moving after Sweden, and you're also, uh, as I understand it, have a second leg to stand on. I is it any risk that you're spreading yourself too thin here? Of course, uh, it's always when you're a small company with many opportunities and uh, a big technology portfolio and also a market that is, uh, I think the interesting thing here is that the market for green hydrogen in the future is absolutely fantastic. It is the, the near term that is more challenging. And in the near term, where we don't know is, it, is that customer segment opening up mm. now, this next year, we know that it will be in five or 10 years for sure, but we need to make the right uh, choices short term. I think that is the challenge and select perhaps where we are, where we are placing our, our 
or back sort of short term, right? So you have to yeah. choose wisely. And, yes. and you mentioned a time frame here. And, and the important thing then is to be around. And you recently finished the capital injection. Uh, and, and how should we look at that? Um, are, are you going to, well, let's say, continue uh, more of the same? Or is there anything in specific that you would like to focus on in the short term as well as in the long term? Yes, I mean, um, we, we are, we are switching the company over to the industrial sector, to production of, of green hydrogen. That is the, the main theme, you could say, in, in the change. And that, that hurts a bit. I mean, that, that is a change that we, we, we are doing. And we want to continue with the reformers, because we see really that that's very good to invest in that. But of course, during the fall, we, we, we knew about the license agreement with Peric. It was coming, but it took a long time. It took a very long time until we finally got this signature. Mm -hmm. And in, in the meantime, we were, of course, planning for, for, the, for the share issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the heart of the whole fundraising is to be able to do this Gigafactory project. Mm -hmm. So part of, actually, a large part of this share issue is, of course, directed towards being able to move into own electrolyzer production, uh, which has different steps. And the, the fundraising we just completed will carry us a bit on that journey, so we can really get on track with, with building, building this so, factory so in this capacity. What, you've, what, what do you suggest that the market here should be looking for going forward here? If you look at 12 months, for instance. Mm. Uh, regarding um, well the use of the proceeds and, yes. and your success here. Yes, yes. No, I, I think um, what I would uh, sort of dream about, of course, is that the market would would follow us on this journey and mm -hmm. to see what we are doing in in a number of years here. Because uh, what we hope to be able to do in the in the shorter term is to to start to take contracts in the industrial sector but also to build an order book for the factory. And we, we'll see how firmly we can, we can build that order book at, at an early stage, but the need is so big, so we know that many of these big projects have to start to secure capacity for their, otherwise they, their time plans will be way out. So I think looking at those, those signals and, and sort of successes from us is, is the best way of, of viewing how we, how we are doing. Interesting. So uh, uh, you will be ready when when uh, when they when they need you in in that respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for that, Krista. Uh, very intriguing and um, uh, a very hot uh, topic, I would take. Mm. So we thank you for that. Thank you very much. So let's give him a warm round of applause. Thank you.